microphone check. Check, check, check. This is the Super Coin Brothers Podcast. Hosted by the Super Coin Brothers at Sahara Coins in Las Vegas. What's up, guys? We're back with another episode. And this one, I got to put it out there right in the beginning. This is big. Uh, Some of what, yeah, it's like gigantic because... Some of what we're going to talk about is technically old news. This is uh, something that's that's ran on for a little while here, um, but we're just getting a hold of some of the new things that have come out on it. And really, this sounds terrible, but it makes me feel pretty good because <laughs> I've said a lot of this stuff for years now. So uh, yeah, we're going to dig right into it, guys. It's Raymond here with Thomas, and uh, let's get right to it. First and foremost, market manipulation is real. Yes. We've all talked about it. We've all thought about it. Everyone who's ever said, silver's not doing anything for me, has always suspected somebody's got their thumb on a scale somewhere. And it turns out there's someone who's going to jail for this later. Yeah. This is happening. It sounds like there's been multiple thumbs, if not a whole finger, a whole hand on top of this. It's it's a solid fist. Yeah. <laughs> so many of you that have come into the store in the last 10 years since I've been here... Uh, when you ask that simple question, like, hey, what do you what do you think silver's going to do? Uh, my answer to you was either, well, if I knew that, I'd be on a beach somewhere. Or if you asked me, you know, what's with the price of silver? Nine times out of ten, I told you, well, I think the market's being manipulated. And then I would go as far, in some cases, as to tell people, uh, you know, just keep a close eye on the, the moves that J.P. Morgan makes. Um, if they're dumping a bunch of silver, just just watch the market. It's going to come down a little bit, and then they're going to rebuy. And I always used to say stuff like that to people. I mean, Thomas, you called me long before you were into coins. This is the first adventure I ever had into silver was to get advice from this gentleman right here because he is the man, the knowledge, all of it. And uh, the first thing he says is that uh, you watch out when J.P. Morgan's selling. Uh, they're going to drop that price. Then you can pick some up at a lower rate and, and ride the wave on up. But... Those guys have been, well, where did we start? Where do we start? Uh, it's, it's with the government stepping into a case. Now, normally, that wouldn't make much of a big difference, except there's this guy at J.P. Morgan who, who has pleaded guilty for, for the market manipulation between the years of 2009 and 2015. Now, wait, you said this guy. Let's uh, be a little more specific. This vice president guy. The vice guy. president guy. Uh, what is it, James Edwards? No, no, it's Edmonds. Yeah, Edmonds. So Edmonds. This guy is uh, Edmonds. He's a vice president. He said he learned how to do what he did from upper management. So we're talking not just about one rogue guy. We're not even saying that this is just one person. We're saying this is a whole culture of, of market manipulation here. I, That's just within that company, though. There was essentially it had come out that this was, this was a, basically they were working with uh, some other unnamed co-conspirators to manipulate the prices. And we're not just talking about silver. We're talking about silver, gold, platinum, palladium. Silver sticks out in my mind because, to me, it's the one that, that seems to be the most you know, stepped on all the time. Um, and, and really, this is, this is huge. Well, the more you dig, the bigger this gets. Yes. Uh, now, I, I, just, I can't even put a dollar amount. Can you even, could you even fathom a dollar amount of what these guys have done? Uh, just per ounce. What do you think the market rate should be at? Personally, right now, yeah. Realistically, I think if the metals in general weren't being stepped on, uh, you would probably be looking uh, realistically at silver. Let's be conservative here and say forty to forty-five dollars an ounce should be the average, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. So what the, are we at right now? Fourteen, fifteen dollars and twenty something cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's been like that. It's been within a dollar of that for years. And oh yeah, it's been kind of hovering around. Um, in 2011, it skyrocketed, but you know that comes down. That actually, some of this leads it, it lends itself to that. Um, but basically, guys, like like Thomas was saying, this was this was something that wasn't just like one guy going rogue here and and just making moves to to manipulate things. Uh, basically, in some of the interviews that had been done and, and things that he had said, uh, he said that he learned how to make these bogus trade orders from senior traders at the bank, uh, and they used the strategy hundreds of times. Now, some of you that are familiar with trading and things like that know the word spoofing, uh, which essentially is them placing orders for precious metals futures um, to distort the market prices, and they never actually executed the trades. So essentially, you're falsifying the market, and it's beneficial to you. Um, you know, And in turn, what ended up happening with a lot of it 
was the actual physical assets that these that their investors were holding were were essentially being handed over to JP Morgan. Right. And I mean it, it just it's so unfair the way that they were they're making the few bucks and everybody else who's trying to get their hands on some silver has got a they don't have a chance at making the profits that they should. Right. Because uh, it is still a safe and sound investment. It's a great way to counteract what you're doing with the stock market. It's part of that well-rounded, robust investment portfolio you should have. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with putting a little bit of money away in the metals. And I still think it's a good idea, even if, well, especially if these prices are manipulated low. Like, let's right. let's all jump on real quick and then see how high we can get those numbers to go. Um, what's interesting about this guy is he... Uh, has pled guilty, which is something that you don't normally see in banking, is the guy's committing crimes and, and admitting to it. Uh, and so the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or the F, or the CFTC, has has been going after this guy, and they, they have his assistance now. This is the tricky part. The reason why it sticks out to me that we should be talking about it is because this guy was supposed to get sentenced on May 31st. And he had the federal government come in and tell that whole courtroom, like, ah, uh, just wait a second here. We're not done with our investigation. Right. So that means this guy who pleaded guilty is just waiting for sentencing. He's got to now wait until the federal government digs deep and sees what they can uncover. And I got to tell you, it looks like this web runs deep. Well, let's add some logs onto the top of that cabin there you're building, because here's the thing is that not only did they say, hey, let's postpone that. The reasoning behind part of that was, hey, look, he's cooperating with our investigation. There was civil suits. They're lining up. It's like a line at the swap meet for the fresh tomatoes right now. Oh, yeah. They are lining up with civil suits, and the courts are holding them off specifically because evidence that's being uncovered during the bigger crime trial or whatever, there's stuff coming out that's helping these civil suits. So if you were involved in one of these civil suits, I don't see why you wouldn't just put your hands up and go, that's cool, do your thing. We'll hit you up when you're done. Yeah. You know, they're uncovering tons and tons of things. And as far as uncovering things, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of you folks have a bank account. You'll have one with maybe U.S. Bank, and you'll throw a little Bank of America in there to mix things up. And, you know, just to be safe, right? Well, there's multiple banks that deal with precious metals and, and bullion markets. Uh, well, J.P. Morgan wasn't the only one involved in this thing. No, but it's interesting is if the other guys got in trouble, because we're looking... Now, you're talking about, like, Deschutes Bank, the UBS, HSBC, like those banks, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, like, those are the big names. We're talking, like, your Eastern European banks, your Hong Kong banks, like, world markets, and this is a global thing. Now, they, they attach some fines to these people, but... They didn't have the cooperating witness inside. So right. this is going to be a whole ball game changer. Right. And those I fines can. were, they were given those fines in January. Yeah. So now it's like all the dots are being connected. They're finally drawing that giraffe on page 23. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a little hard, but once they start connecting these dots, it's continued to get larger and larger and larger. Um, this, I want to believe, I say, I think this trial they said has already been postponed two or three times. Yeah. They just got another five month postponement of, of it. So in the next five months, I guess the question is, how do you ask a lawyer if you can get in on a class action lawsuit here? Yeah, let me tell you. I mean, looking at this more and more, um, I know we, we kind of dug into it earlier. Um, the, the evidence against them for price rigging of the market, mm-hmm. it's substantial. I mean, they have charts that are showing to the day that they would have, you know, 99% of, of shorts that were out there for a day, guess who they belong to? J.P. Morgan. The very next day, what would happen? Oh, hey, look, they're on the other end of this thing. It was it was like clockwork. And and again, you know, we're just talking about the facts that we're finding, you know, that we're looking into that have been researched. Um, but prior to all of this, like I said, it was always one of those things where I told folks like, hey, keep an eye on those charts. Look at the look at the sell. Look when they're selling off. Look what they're shorting. Look what they're doing. Because really, with that mass amount uh, of silver that they're dealing with. It, it can manipulate the market quite easily. I mean, one of the things that was kind of funny, because I knew we were going to be talking about this, um, was they were saying with the physical amount of silver that had been essentially put away and locked away in a, a vault to cover in case these investors called on their silver, they were calling it the silver death star because it's <laughs> it's so much silver. But the crazy thing is, is they also talk about when they look at the ETFs, they look at all the things that were already purchased by investors. If every investor was to essentially call on their physical metal, there was not enough physical metal there to provide for those investors. That's something I've talked about with gold, because they say with gold, all the gold that's been purchased on paper, 
it's about two, or I'm sorry, for every two, or I think it's, no, it was three. For every three investors, or every three ounces, if everybody called, they would get one. No. Think about that. That's insane. You were buying metal on paper, essentially to protect your fiat paper, and if you said, hey, uh, yeah, we all got together, me, my cousins, brothers, aunts, uncles, everybody with money and gold on paper, we want all of our gold, and they're like, that's cool, you have 30 ounces, here's 10. No, no, no. That's, again, I don't understand how you can buy precious metals and just leave them, leave them out there in the world. I, I feel like this is one of those tangible assets that I just need to have in the safe. Mm-hmm. This has got to be under the pillow. This is where if the dollar goes to heck in a handbasket, then we know silver and gold are going to go up. And that's, that's why you got to hold on to this stuff. I don't know. There have been other lawsuits, too, about those places that have uh, uh, your gold and silver where they keep it in the account, and then they charge you rent. Like, right. my goodness. It's almost like a giant safety deposit box. Oh. And, and, and this sounds terrible coming from somebody who sells physical assets to people. I, I really don't like safety deposit boxes, and that's me personally, because I look at it like this. If I go buy something with an 8% premium, and then I go put it in a safety deposit box knowing that it's a long-term investment, and I'm paying you know $80 a month for my, my large safety deposit box... Uh, yeah. Let's do the math. You know, if it's in there for twenty years, where are you making any money? Now I get it safe, but come on. There's a few now. banks out there that'll give you that safety deposit box for free, but Correct. those are few and far between. Most folks are on a waiting list to get a safety deposit box because it makes you feel safe. But I gotta tell you, you know, a good contractor, a good carpenter, somebody can uh, hide one of those safes in a wall for you, and it can be a real great uh, investment. I That's think- true. Creating a gold toilet in your house or silver <laughs> toilet in your house might be the way to go on this one, but. Now, you know, it, look, here's the thing. From everything you can read on this and the case and all the information that's out there, that there's a lot of folks that are saying, hey, this is kind of a slam dunk thing. Like, it is what it is. We've got all the information. But let's be real here. We're talking giant banks. Uh, and the part of it that does make me slightly nervous is that in 2015, there was also an investigation regarding the same thing. Silver and gold, price rigging, fixing the prices, manipulating the prices, however you want to say it. Uh, not one banker was held accountable. Not one. That's, I mean, if that tells you there's an issue with the system, I don't know what does, if that doesn't do it for you. Um, but in this case, I mean, because we have the, 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 hey man, yeah, we did it, and all the information as to who did it, how they did it, when they did it, uh, that kind of changes things a little bit with this one. Well, this will be interesting because I know the climate out there now is uh, one where the big banks that are too big to fail... Uh, they've taken a lot of money in the past and some of them have paid it back and some of them didn't take as much as others. But the general feeling I get is that people are not fans of the banks getting it an easy break. Like if you or I break the law, we, we're going to jail. You know right. what I mean? That's it. There's no, there's no buy your way out, get out of jail free card for us. Yeah. And so with this case, this guy being guilty, confessing to being guilty, helping the police or or the investigations go on, the federal government stepping in and saying they need time to finish their investigation. I just wonder if this is the time where heads will actually roll. And, you know, honestly, there's there's so much uh, evidence that's been turned over, not only by J.P. Morgan, uh, well, that's getting (laughs) coming from them, uh, but the Deutsche Deutsche Bank, basically uh, in 2016, they also pleaded guilty to cheating the markets. And when they did so, they had to turn over a ton of evidence. There was hundreds of thousands of documents, recorded phone calls, I mean, just piles of evidence. I would love to see what some of these guys are talking about between themselves. Yeah. If we can get a hold of emails on that thing, let a prosecutor tear that apart. I mean, just... you. Oh, just point these hounds in the in the direction and let them loose, man. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to come out with this, guys. And, and you know, just like anything else, I mean, you, come on now, we can be we can be talking about a court case with a landlord that didn't replace a broken AC, and it'll it'll take three years. You know, so we're looking at, at something that can be kicked down the road for a very very long time. And and you know, on the flip side of this, I mean, obviously this is just big news, big information that we wanted to make sure you guys had you know available to you. But let's be real. What's the other side of this? What what do you do in this situation? That thought for many of you that I know I've spoke to personally here in the store, on the phone, through email, have always said, hey, man, I think the markets are, are being manipulated. Hey, I think that silver is underpriced. To me, this feels like a big high five to you. You know, you're looking at this, you're going multiple banks, not just the little mom and pop's bank that was up in the prices. This is this is legitimate manipulation that was causing the prices to be to be kept low and kept down and right now i feel like is a prime time to look at that and go guess what 
I should probably get into some of this silver while the prices are still low. Definitely. Absolutely. And let's start looking at this. This is one of those long cooking pressure cooker situations here. It will only get uh, more volatile as the days go on. Once we get to a, a breaking point, silver is going to do something just from this case alone. But this is not the only thing that's affecting the silver market right now. There's also uh, other legislation that was passed that's going to allow small banks to use gold and silver as a tier one collateral credit when they were going to borrow uh, money from the old Federal Reserve there. So, when so that's going to make all those banks like that old Game Boy game Kirby where he would just suck everything up around him. Exactly. It's going to be insane. Exactly. It's like Mrs. and Mr. Pac Man are about to go to town on silver and gold because the more they have on hand and then the higher the price of gold and silver goes, it's almost incentivizing banks to have gold and silver on there. Yeah, it, it really is taking something that was kind of the everyday Joe's you know, tool to kind of protect themselves against the regular banking system and sucking it into the banking system. So just like anything else, supply and demand, they're going to start sucking in mass amounts. When that happens, what is the little guy left with? The market is going to go up. It's going to be more expensive to get a hold of an ounce of silver and an ounce of gold. Yeah, it's and this is this. I know we focus a lot on, on gold and silver. That's what we talk about a lot. Um, but in the big grand scheme of this, this this is including gold, silver, platinum, palladium. And I start thinking about that. Platinum three years ago was $300 higher than gold. What is it now? $200 less than gold? $400, $400 less, less than gold? Yeah. I mean, you know, still to this day, most folks that go to a jewelry store, they're like, oh, let me get the platinum because the platinum is beautiful and it's more expensive. It's not the case, guys. The jewelers are still charging you for it, but it's cheaper. The platinum is a cheaper metal. Is it because something happened with the metal? Honestly, at this point, I don't think so. There's still many uses for it. There's still lots of things out there that are use it. And, well, that type of suppression and that big of a differential to me doesn't make sense. You know, it's interesting. June, uh, no, this is June 2019. Gold has gone up from 1277 to 1430, back down to, to 1400. I mean, it's on a yo-yo string right now. Right. Palladium this year has done a crazy jump uh, and has gone up to 1500 and it's cruising a little bit back down again. But platinum has been like a sober driver. It's the designated driver of metals right now because it's just chilling at 800. It has stayed in its lane. There's no question there, no swerving, no nothing. No nothing. It's just interesting. And silver even, I mean, what, jump 50 cents in a day? Like that's a huge move for silver. Right. I honestly, I wish it was larger, you know. There's lots of things that are going to affect the metals, and I understand that. I know this isn't the only thing affecting it, um, but like you said, I mean, we had, it was a, what, a 2.5% increase in a day. I get the number 2.5% doesn't really spark everybody to go running to their store to go buy stuff, but please tell me when the last time your bank account gave you a 2.5% increase on anything. It it doesn't happen. It, it's, it's unheard of. Totally. And completely. right now... Looking at the metals market, this information to me is humongous, and honestly, it's downplayed. This isn't something that I saw in the news yesterday or even a year ago. This isn't something that's being highlighted. You know, this is something you have to research on your own and get the information. It's interesting you mentioned a year ago because some of the articles you're going to find, once you go in there and you Google Edmonds and and, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and market manipulation, some of the first articles you're going to find are from 2018. It's the, the curiousness comes from the most recent one at May 31st when the federal government steps in and says, oh, hey, by the way, we're still doing a background or our investigation. Right. You can't have this case finished yet. It won't. You can't do it. So there's information from 2018 out there. It goes all the way back to 2011, 2009. You'll see all sorts of different cases and, and people talking about the manipulation. But we still haven't seen that shoe drop yet now. I think this guilty plea from him is the changing factor. You've heard other people talk about silver going up and this Mm -hmm. is it, this is happening, it's finally there. But they've never been able to point to one guy who's been saying, this is it, this is why we're guilty, here's my guilty plea. That's a a game changer. Yeah, well, and and that's the thing is, like I said, it's not... It's not one individual. I mean, he came out and said, yeah, we've been doing it, but hold on. Let me spill the beans on this one. Exactly. I mean, for those of you that watch a lot of TV, I know Thomas and I watch a lot of shows. I really feel like we are watching a real life script for billions being written right now. Totally and completely. In case you haven't watched that, guys, you definitely want to do that. This is definitely the discount Axelrod movie of the year right here. It definitely is. And I'm wondering when, you know, when Wendy's going to come in and try to get some (laughs) mental help for him. So this is definitely one of those moments, man. I mean, we're watching this. You know, not necessarily right in real time, but it's happening. And it's it's 
It's going to be one of those things that I do, I do think is going to drag out for a while, but I really think those of you that purchased silver uh, really in the last couple of years, since 2011, I feel like you're positioned really well right now. Absolutely. And if you're thinking about getting out of silver because it hasn't done anything and it's boring, I encourage you to do some research on this article figure out on these articles figure out if you don't get excited when you start seeing how many people are about to get into trouble yeah definitely pump the brakes on that thought i mean that's that's a big one i'll actually make sure too that i do put the the links to some of these articles um in the description of the podcast that way you guys can view it um and if you are listening to this on youtube i know that sounds weird but the podcast goes there if you are listening to it there i'll make sure the links are there as well um, this, this is just, uh, this is big information. I mean, I've been doing this for a while and like I said, I've been repeating myself and I'm not trying to say that I knew this was happening like, like to this extent, but it, it was just one of those where, man, you guys look at these charts, you look at all the data they have now and it's, it's almost like a slap in the face to the, to the investor, you know, and some of the information they give you about the way that they did this and the way that they essentially, you know, uh, some of the moves that were made were, were basically there. Uh, you know, for the, the the investors that just weren't as savvy uh, and they were very quick to, to turn their silver over, to, you know, move things around and, and let them have their way with it. So I don't know. This this is it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Yeah. And now I'll also be real curious to see if this is one of those slap on the wrist situations where they hit them with some multi-million or billion dollar fee or, or if or fine, I should say. Or if they uh, actually try and arrest some folks for market manipulation. I, I would like to see some arrests on this. And some people definitely should not be in this profession anymore after this. Yeah, this is this is a big one, guys. This is definitely, definitely uh, something that can change uh, the entire outlook of your portfolio based on what you purchase. So uh, keep an eye on this, guys. I mean, we will. We'll definitely follow up on this if we get some more information um, and, and hopefully just put it out there for you guys. And again, this isn't that we're you know, saying so-and-so is guilty, this person's guilty. Really what this is for us is is helping to create, you know, knowledgeable collectors, knowledgeable people that are purchasing bullion, you know, so you understand what affects the market and what has been affecting the market. Um, I mentioned earlier the the two and a half percent increase that we saw. Um, you know, there's, there's things going on around the world that affect uh, the prices of metals. You know, uh, anything that, that could potentially, you know, create any sort of, uh, how would I put it? Not necessarily a vacuum to the metals or eh, that's exactly what it is, a vacuum to the, the metals and, and, and precious metals in general. Um, you know, worldwide crises can cause that. Lots of things can cause it, guys. And, and it's just be aware of it. When, when currency gets weaker, whether whatever country you're in, when the currency of the land gets weaker, precious metals go up. Absolutely. So war is definitely something that would change the currency of the land because you're not going to get paid for war in paper money. You're going to pay for your bills in wartime with actual gold and silver right um and honestly let's just talk real quick if these are folks listening for the very first time folks who've never invested in silver or gold before where where would you be at on some numbers like i mean if you take a look at your budget and you you figured out all your your must pays you figured out all your want to pays and then you have x number of dollars left over are you saying people should maybe put in like 15 percent of that into the precious metals game as just a, a a hedge against everything else or or how would you uh, advise our would-be future investors? You know, as far as setting a, a standard number, saying, hey, let's do 10%, 15%, it's hard to do that um, only because, like I said, I mean, okay, I'm coming at this from a different angle because I'm like, oh, man, I got a lot of little mouths to feed in my house. They're like little birds every day. You know, I need more food. So there's always money going into that. But uh, like you said, I, I guess when you're done and you know what your, your you know, expendable, you know, cash is that you have that you can go you can go get something with, um, first and foremost, if you're just getting in, I'm going to tell you, this is so blanket answer. I'm going to tell you, spend what you're comfortable spending. We have some collectors that come into the store that literally do uh, one ounce a week, you know, one ounce every couple of weeks. Now, a lot of folks are like, well, why would I put money into silver if I can only buy one ounce or I can only buy two ounces? Well, let's talk about that real quickly. If you bought one ounce a week, that's 52 ounces in a year with silver at $15, if this pops and it goes back up to $45, you are making a substantial amount of money on your one ounce a week investment. So now it's long term. Yeah, $780 to get in. To get into that at 52 weeks, one ounce a week, 780 bucks if you're buying it at today's price. If it bounced up to $45 an ounce, at that, at the, when you went in at 780 bucks, 
you would be at $2,340. Now, these are rough cut numbers, but basically what I'm seeing there is more than a 100% increase. Is right. what you're saying. Right. Now, us, now, we live in Las Vegas, which is a great city. Love yeah, the we city. Do. And there's a few different places out there where you can get a 100% return on your investment, but they call that the craps table. They do, and you can also get a negative 500% out that, of that, that as well very true. quickly. So I'm not sure if there are too many other safe places where you can tuck away a few dollars here or there and have the opportunity to make a 100 200 or 250% increase. Now, those are the ideal numbers. I'm not trying to blow any smoke anywhere that it's going to happen. But... Uh, if I was a gambling man, if I was going to make a, a bet, I feel like precious metals is not a bad one to have. Well, in positioning wise, you know, let's hypothetically say you did do that with silver and it does turn out that way once this all shakes out. Hypothetically, that silver goes to 2300 bucks. I mean, if you wanted to go to gold at that point, you could very easily sell off your silver, move it into gold, and, and you really wouldn't have spent anything out of your pocket to get a little bit of gold. And so it's just about balancing the numbers, moving things around. And I say moving things around, it's kind of an interesting thing to say while we're talking about this. But, uh, you know, there's ways to do it. There's ways to advance your portfolio. There's ways to make money doing this. Um, and, and in this situation, again, I know I sound like a broken record. I just feel like this is an opportunity that's not under a spotlight. And if you know what's going on, uh, now is a great time. Yeah. Look, I'll give you a practice example here. I like to collect silver myself. And I would normally go out after work. I go swing by Wendy's or Taco Bell, something like that, and I'll blow twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty bucks. I said twenty bucks at Taco Bell. I'm not proud of it. How many tacos is that? It's not just tacos. There's cheesy, beefy burritos involved, and deliciousness. And Holy burrito tacos moly, that's a family bite. pack. Well, okay, so I eat for a family of four sometimes. Whatever. Fair enough. Moral of the story is I stopped doing that, mostly because I also want to see the age of 40. Um, and so I'll take that $20 bill I would have blown at the fast food place, and I'll just take it out of my wallet, and I'll put it in my pocket. And when I get home, I take it from my pocket, and I put it in a coin jar, cash jar, my, my fun money, right? And this is just the practice run. But the problem is that cash money is still in my pocket, or still in my hand. At some point, I can go spend it. So now... When I think about it, I'm just putting an ounce of silver down. I'm saving that 20 bucks. All I'm doing. I'm just coming in. I'm buying an ounce. I have that ounce. And if something happens later, I can always bring it into a place like us at Sahara Coins, and I can sell that. And then I get my money back. It's the it's the foolproof, spend-proof savings account. Only spend it when you need it. Yeah, that's that's the truth, man. It's It definitely helps. Uh, I mean, guys, we could probably go on for an hour talking about this and really digging deeper. Uh, we'll break it up into a couple episodes so we can save your guys' ears a bit. We need questions in the comments sections. We need yes. email questions wherever you want to put it down. I would love to engage on some of this. Let us know what you find in your research because I swear, once you start digging into this, it's, you're going to become detectives. You're going to love it. It's it's a, a really interesting scenario, and I think we should all look into it more. Yeah, the comments, the guys are definitely a catalyst for us to keep the topics where you want them and, and, and really discuss things that you're interested in, and that's what our goal is to do. Uh, is to talk about those topics, have fun doing it, and definitely keep educating you guys. Well, we're going to wrap this one up because, like I said, this we can go on for, for forever. So We'll see at least another five months before we see a sentencing here, so we'll yeah. be back for an update then. Exactly, <laughs> and I'm sure things will, will uh, you know fall out of the basket on the way there that we'll, we'll sure. catch and discuss. So, all right, guys, we appreciate you listening. Again, this is Raymond and Thomas. You want to get a hold of us, let's go through that spiel. You can get a hold of us at service at saharacoins.net. You can hop on Facebook and check us out on the Super Coin Bros Facebook or the Sahara Coins Facebook. You can also go to supercoinbros.com, saharacoins.com, hop on iTunes, Spotify, any of your favorite streaming media, and 17 and under, not a movie without a parent. Actually, any of you guys can listen. You can be younger than that. Did you rehearse that? That sounded rehearsed. Definitely I mean, really didn't good. rehearse, dude. It just kind of well, came out. Just well played. played. Yeah, you know, we tried. You're a pro. Uh, well, semi. <laughs> Triple A. All right. We will talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening.